Hi, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on what we know now about Final Cut Pro 10. My name is Larry Jordan, and I am delighted to have you join us today. There's a lot we want to talk about, so let's get right into it. I want to start by setting expectations. What we can't do today is run the software. Apple hasn't released it, and we don't have it. What we can do today is take a really close look at what Apple has publicly presented and discuss the implications this has on the new product, our hardware, and our future purchase planning. The goal for this session is to look at the major new features Apple announced in Final Cut Pro 10 and what they mean for us going forward. We're going to analyze existing screenshots and highlight details that you may have missed in watching the onstage demo. And we'll allow plenty of time at the end for questions, answers, and discussion to the extent that we can. Which gets to my most important statement here, and that's a disclosure. Apple has given me permission to talk about anything that they demoed on stage, either at the February presentation, which I first wrote about, or the April presentation at NAB, plus anything that their executives spoke about in the private session after this was over at the front of the stage at NAB. However, I am still covered under NDA for anything that I may know that was not presented within that context. Consequently, there are some questions that I'm just not allowed to answer. I apologize for that, but there's still plenty of things that we can talk about today. This presentation today is organized into three broad areas. First, a discussion of the new operating system technology supported by Final Cut Pro 10 major new Final Cut Pro 10 features and screenshots from Final Cut 10 and how Apple showed it working in their stage demos. The stage presentations were given by three people, Richard Townhill, who's the director of Pro Video Product Marketing, Peter Steinhauer, who's an architect for Final Cut Pro, and Randy Ubelos, who's the chief architect for video applications. As I found out at NAB, architects work for engineering. So when Peter and Randy were giving their presentation, that was engineering speaking. Richard, who was the MC of the event, was viewing things from a marketing perspective. There are four major OS features that supported inside Final Cut Pro 10. The first is 64-bit computing. Second is Grand Central Dispatch. Third, rendering is now offloaded to the graphics processing unit. And color management is integrated via ColorSync. 64-bit computing means that projects can be essentially unlimited in size. Today's 4-gigabyte RAM barrier is gone. The new limit is 16 exabytes. <laughs> it's just mind-bendingly big. But then if you think back a few years, like about 15, there was a point where we thought a megabyte was huge beyond definition. <laughs> what this means is that Final Cut Pro 10 will take advantage of as much RAM as you can put into your system. And the more RAM that you have, the faster that Final Cut will run. Grand Central Dispatch allows Final Cut Pro 10 to use as many processors as you have on your system. Final Cut Pro 7 currently uses one and a half processors. What this means is that the application will be very, very fast. The more processors you have, the faster it will run. Finally, we've got a reason to buy Mac Pros again. And there's a reason to buy computers with more processors rather than less. By moving calculations from the CPU to the GPU, which is the graphics processing unit, bitmapped images, such as video, render far faster when the GPU is involved than when the CPU is involved. What this means is that effects that used to take time to render can now be displayed in real time or near real time. This means that buying a faster graphics card allows Final Cut Pro 10 to run faster. The current version of Motion, Motion 4, is already taking advantage of the GPU, but Final Cut never has. With Final Cut Pro 10, that changes. And finally, ColorSync is color management, which is built into the operating system to ensure accurate and consistent color during both image editing and display. What this means is that by supporting ColorSync, Final Cut Pro 10 is trying to guarantee that the color of the image is consistent throughout post-production, final output, and ultimate display. Theoretically, if ColorSync is implemented properly, the colors that you see on your computer monitor would be as equally accurate as the colors you see on an externally connected calibratable video monitor and would match the colors displayed uh, on any other 
equally calibrated system anywhere in the world.